Two looks better than one? Is that what's going on? <laughs> it's the holiday season. <laughs> is he just visiting? Or yeah, he's just visiting. He no, 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 he's just he's just here. Steve, just being around the team, seeing Jabari and the way he impacts the culture, are there things that you see now that you didn't have last season in terms of just being able to switch out all the positions and just being that culture guy like the vocal league? Yeah, I mean, I won't speak to last season, but this season, yeah, he brings a lot as far as culture is concerned. Today was a day where we had a lot of guys on the side and guys kind of nursing injuries, and he was one of the guys in in the practice and, you know, bringing the energy on both ends of the floor and pumping guys up and competing. So, yeah, he brings a lot of that to our group. He was on the side watching practice and a lot of injuries and all that. I mean, so we had Eric who was a little sore. We had Jalen, who was a little sore. We had JT sitting on the side. We had Josh, who's a little sore um, from, I don't even know, workout or something. So, um, yeah, we had, and then Alpi was a little sore as well. So, soreness is going around <laughs> with our with our group. He, uh, he was uh, in, but then he, he uh, took himself out. Bruno uh, practice? He did. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he did. He did a good job. Seemed like he made it out of uh, practice, the live part, uh, well. And we will see how he feels tomorrow. So hopefully he won't be one of the little sore guys. You said, I don't want to say, put a word in your mouth, but you waited so long for a long, hard practice. And then uh, to have six guys not in it. Yes. What was your, how'd you feel watching those guys watching? I felt awful <laughs> i hadn't i spent so much time on this great practice plan and we had to basically scrap a lot of it and uh, do a little bit more breakdown which we needed i mean there was a lot of purpose to our practice and we got some cleanup stuff done but yeah it would have been nice to have the whole group but if you're gonna take some have some bruises and stuff going into a four-day period just at the time it's time to do it when you say more breakdown, does that mean just more like individual work with guys one-on-one? -on -one? Two on two. Two on two. Yep. How, much, how beneficial is this whole entire week going to be for you guys? I remember a couple of weeks ago you talked about how hard it was to, um, you know, get that practice time on the road and stuff. Yeah, I mean, if everybody was available, then it would be great. But today we didn't have everybody available, so it was just okay. Like, we did some zone stuff, which was good. We needed to work on our zone. We did some two-on-two -two pick and roll stuff. We needed to do that. Um, we got to some of the spacing stuff that we've been talking about. We walked through that, um, but didn't get to it live. So, yeah, it's, it's good to have today to build on and build on it tomorrow and have that as well so we can clean some of this stuff up as far as our execution on both ends. Understanding he's probably not going to shoot 80% from three. How, how, <laughs> how, how important is it that he showed that willingness to be able to take that shot when it's there? Yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it'll be sustainable, but when he's working with Luke and Robbie, he make, he makes those shots. Like he makes his spot ups, and I think it has a lot to do. Rafael and I were talking about this. I think it has a lot to do with his shot selection. He's taking the ones that are wide open. He's not going to take anything that's, you know, half contested. So uh, with that comes confidence, and he works hard, and he's making them. It's great. With Bruno possibly coming back Friday, have you figured out how you might use him moving forward? And is there a possibility that he could be on the floor with both with Bruno or Alpha? Yes, there's a possibility he could be on the floor with um, either guy playing some four. Um, but yeah, once uh, Bruno comes back, it's going to be a little bit harder with uh, the rotation of the four and five for sure. Coach, what ways have you seen um, Bisha makes growth? This season, I remember last year we talked about it was a little bit of a struggle, um, you know, when he was on the court, going from a playmaker to, you know, when to score the basket. He's done a good job. Last game, he had he played, I think, 12 minutes, but he had five assists in that in that short period of time. He's a point guard and knows uh, when to give the ball up on time, on target. Uh, he's getting more vocal. That's probably the next step as far as getting guys in the right spot and stuff. But he's so so smart like knows it before it's happening and knows where guys are supposed to be he just needs to speak up and say it but he has made a good jump from last year to this year as far as being a solid backup point guard Jabari has done the bulk of his scoring from the perimeter is, is that what you want to see to maintain that spacing where you have guys like Jalen and KPJ mostly driving and trying to score in the paint yeah well I want him to continue to shoot his threes so he will 
attract that defender and then he can attack the closeouts. I think he'll be really good attacking closeouts and getting downhill and finishing at the rim. Um, but for him in his position, he's going to have to make the threes so then he's able to attack. But I want him to be on the attack as well. I don't want him to stand on the perimeter because he's so long and quick and can get there. And we don't want to take that away from him. So oh, that's step one A of yeah, right. right? Now, step one B will follow. One hundred percent. Coach, away from the court, um, some of your younger players like uh, KJ, Jalen, Jayshon have had these charity events, you know, leading up to Thanksgiving, and getting out, and giving back to, you know, to some of the unfortunate people. What does that mean to you as a head coach? Not only to be a part of an organization that breeds that type of culture, but as the head coach and instilling that type of um, culture into in, into them. Yeah, it means a lot. It. it um... So one of my messages today to the guys was how blessed are we to be out here for practice and there are people lining up around the building just trying to get a meal for Thanksgiving, you know, a free meal for Thanksgiving and the blessings that we have, we have to pass along. So I love that we have guys and it's not like they, they're the guys who are going to the organization and saying, I want to help and I want to do something. So, yeah, to be the head coach of this group is great because we got really, really good guys. They're young, but they have a sense of self and sense of giving and, you know, they know what's important. And it's really cool to see young people do that because the perception of young people is they're me, 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 right? And I, I, I. And, we got a bunch of guys who are selfless and want to give to others, give to each other, and then give to others. So it's really cool. What's Thanksgiving like in the Silas household? <laughs> uh, family. My wife has family around. My daughter came back from college, so that's that's it. Sitting around and talking about how thankful we are usually because, yeah, it's usually a... a I'm in the middle of the season and I need to like break away for a day and enjoy family and be understand what I'm thankful for because there's you know losing games and there's blown coverages and there's you know stuff that I'm tossing and turning about but there's also so so much to be thankful for so that's the that's the we pass around the little the little thing and everybody says what they're thankful for and it's hard to get teenagers to do that but <laughs> but uh i'll have a long one a long list this year thank you